The Pacific Ocean has vanished. Not boiled, not poisoned, just gone. It packed up and left like a roommate who got tired of cleaning up after everyone else. Where waves once rolled, there's only bone-dry seabed, dead coral, rusted ships, salt, and silence so loud you can hear your own thirst. The Sahara, once neatly boxed into North Africa, now stretches its claws over Europe. The Amazon? A rumor. Australia? Don't ask. You know, this isn't a science fiction film or a prophecy, it's just a question. A very uncomfortable one. What if Earth really became a desert planet? How does something as wet, lush, and moody as Earth become dry, dead, and consistent? So what does it mean for Earth to become a desert planet? Because we're not talking about a few more dry seasons or bring your own cactus gardening in the suburbs and no, we're talking about something much more extreme, not just a planet with more deserts, but a planet that is a desert, a place where the hydrological cycle collapses, rainfall stops, soil dries into dust, and yes, even the oceans are gone. And now that sounds dramatic and it should because it's not just drought, it's system failure. Technically, a desert is defined as any region receiving less than 250 millimeters of rain per year. That's about 10 inches, or two bottles of soda if you're thirsty and desperate for metaphors. By that definition, deserts already cover about a third of Earth's land surface. But climate models suggest that by the year 2100, under extreme warming pathways, desertification could engulf over half the habitable land. That's bad. But we're going further, we're asking, what if even the oceans didn't survive? Because believe it or not, they're not permanent. As climate scientist Dr. James Hansen warned, we could end up with a very different planet, one that's not just unrecognizable, but uninhabitable. So yes, we're going beyond droughts. We're imagining the end of water, Earth, not as a cradle of life, but as a tomb of sand. What if this isn't the first time Earth has begun to dry out? What if the warning signs have been here all along, etched into lake beds, buried under sand, whispered by forests that vanished thousands of years ago? Because before we talk about a future without water, we should admit something uncomfortable. Earth has done this before. And the results, they were not kind. 6,000 years ago, the Sahara wasn't a desert. It was alive, green, full of life. There were lakes the size of countries, trees, crops, cattle, people. This was the African humid period, a time when a small, boring wobble in Earth's orbit brought monsoons to the north. Rain fell regularly, civilizations thrived. And then the wobble kept wobbling and the rain left. The transformation wasn't overnight. It was a slow betrayal. Centuries of drying skies, disappearing rivers and encroaching sand. By the time the climate stabilized, the Sahara had killed its lakes, starved its forests, and evicted its humans. So yeah, orbital mechanics can be a real buzzkill. Now jump to the 1930s. America, the Dust Bowl, not quite planetary collapse, but a very loud warning shot. For a few years, rain stopped falling on the American plains, but the soil, already weakened by decades of plowing, monoculture, and magical thinking, there were no trees left to hold it in place. So the wind did what wind does. Black blizzards tore across the country. Homes were buried, cattle suffocated. Kids grew up coughing dust out of their lungs. At one point, the U.S. lost more than 75% of its topsoil in the hardest hit areas. It didn't take a volcano or a comet, just greed, weather, and bad luck. And it happened fast, from fertile to forgotten in less than a decade. If Earth really became a desert planet, where would you hide? Would you live beneath the sand in sealed domes on some orbiting arc waiting for clouds that never come? Let us know in the comments and tell us how long you think you'd last before the dust got in. What would it take to kill the oceans? The classic death spiral, the runaway greenhouse effect, Venus did it, and according to studies in nature geoscience, Earth could too, especially if pushed by anthropogenic CO2 or unexpected feedbacks. Here's the cycle. Greenhouse gases trap heat. That heat evaporates water. Water vapor adds more heat. And eventually the atmosphere holds so much vapor, clouds vanish, and the surface starts to simmer. Scientists estimate this tipping point may lie around 1,000 parts per million CO2. 
depending on other variables. We're currently at approximately 420 parts per million and rising. Even if humans did nothing wrong, and wow, what a hypothetical, the sun is still going to betray us, quietly, patiently. Stars get hotter as they age. Over the next 1 to 1.5 billion years, solar output is projected to rise by about 10%, which is enough to start boiling Earth's oceans, regardless of our emissions. So yes, even the slow version of death is still death. But what if we didn't have to wait a billion years for the sun to dry us out? What if the sun simply lost its temper one day and sent a flare strong enough to erase our oceans in a flash? This isn't a science fiction scenario. It's a real scientifically plausible event. The super flare, a massive eruption from the sun that could release up to 10,000 times the energy of the solar flares we see today. In fact, a NASA study published in the Astrophysical Journal in 2019 suggests that our sun has likely produced these super flares in the past just not while humans were around to record them. What would happen to Earth? First, a massive burst of X-rays hits the atmosphere. This would heat up the ionosphere and disrupt radio communications. But the real kicker? Atmospheric stripping. The intense radiation could strip away significant portions of Earth's atmosphere, much like what happened to Mars when it lost its magnetic field. Solar wind would carry away hydrogen, oxygen, and water vapor, essentially evaporating the oceans into space. Scientists like Dr. Natasha N. Ivancic, a solar physicist at NASA, suggest that this could happen at any time. The sun's behavior is far more volatile than we previously thought. We might be in for a solar event we can't prepare for. What does a Tuesday look like on a dead planet? No oceans, no rivers, no rain, just dust, sun, and silence. If Earth dried out, what would be left? The answer is not much. Most cities today are built where water once made things easy. Ports, rivers, floodplains. The coastlines we now love, gone. Swallowed by heat, buried under sand, or made uninhabitable by radiation. Infrastructure crumbles, roads crack, power lines warp in the heat. And without water, civilization retreats. People cluster in domed refuges, underground bunkers, or deep mountain shelters anywhere they can scavenge moisture and block the sun. Some try to live at night, some try to leave, most just try to survive. With no oceans to moderate the climate, temperature swings become lethal. Think 130 degrees Fahrenheit, 54 degrees Celsius, days followed by freezing nights. The oceans don't just give us water, they give us stability. They buffer heat, regulate the jet streams, and drive the very air we breathe. Without them, Earth becomes a chaos machine. Winds tear through dry canyons at hurricane speeds. Sunlight becomes a weapon. And UV radiation? Sky high. The ozone layer long gone. Food doesn't grow in dust. Without rain, without aquifers, without fertile topsoil, agriculture fails almost everywhere. The last scraps of food come from hydroponic vaults, lit by artificial sun, buried deep underground. A farm becomes a lab. A tomato becomes a privilege. Most animals don't make it. The big ones die first, then the birds, then the insects. Eventually, only extremophiles, microbes who laugh at radiation and dine on stone, inherit the earth. Humans hang on. We're stubborn like that. But on a desert planet, survival means transformation. Maybe we'll bioengineer lungs to filter ash and heat. Maybe we'll create synthetic skin that doesn't burn. Or maybe we'll upload ourselves into servers powered by solar panels we'll spend our last breath cleaning. Or maybe we'll just go extinct. Eventually, even the signs of what we were disappear. Skyscrapers collapse into the dunes, satellites fall from orbit, languages vanish, too dry to whisper. The only memory of water, carved into rocks, etched by vanished rivers. Then maybe, just maybe, Buried beneath the dust, a message. We were here, and we were thirsty. So, could it happen? Could Earth really become a desert planet? Yes, maybe slowly, over centuries of denial, drought, and quiet collapse. Maybe suddenly, with one solar tantrum, one ecological tipping point, one mistake. Or maybe it already did. What if we're not watching a documentary about a possible future? What if we're watching a memory played back inside a machine. There's a theory. 
strange, fringe, but not impossible, that advanced civilizations might preserve their knowledge by simulating their pasts, running models, replaying failures, teaching echoes. So what if we're not heading toward a desert planet? What if this is a replay of the time Earth already became one, and all of this, you know, the rivers, the clouds, the oceans, is just a reconstruction, humming on solar power in a cave beneath a dead sky? What better way to remember water than to simulate it? So what do you think? Could Earth really dry out like this? Would we survive it? Would you? If the oceans vanished, where would you go? Underground? Off-world? Drop your thoughts in the comments, because if this really is a simulation, maybe your answer helps write the next one.